Uh, today what I did, I got up early, I put the parts out in the sun. We're in a, a pretty warm part of the year here. The last couple days it's been wa way warmer than normal for this time of year. I wanted to see how these ultimately dried up. And Rob is going to come over. Uh, I don't know if Steve is coming over, but his part. Now what he did with his part, it's brushed aluminum. And he didn't paint it at all. But look how close it looks to, to the real silver. That's pretty neat. But anyway, the, the point that I wanted to make with this, I had spoken to Luciano the other day too. He has done this several times with the Rust-Oleum. And he confirmed, and I wanted to just pass this on too, that the most important part, if you're using Rust-Oleum, is to let it dry the longer the better. And if you have a warm part of your house, put it in a warm part of your house where it can dry up. And I would say the ideal thing would be if every if you had the time and in the middle of winter, who's rushing anyway? Then the nicest thing would be if you do the Rust-Oleum, let it dry at least a week before you put the urethane on. Then in this case, I put two coats on this, two really thick coats. And of course, Rob always has the, the option, and Steve too, of you can thousand grit sandpaper this down and put that third very thin wet coat on. So, hey, I'm really happy the way this worked out. And I don't know what he's going to uh, decide to do when he gets here, but that's okay, of course. We, uh, I think this is going to be just fine. To be honest, I'm real impressed. Now, remember the, the downside of Rust-Oleum oppo as opposed to the way more expensive car paint. The downside is it can be soft if you put it on thick. So the trick would be to put the rust-oleum on as thin as possible and still get coverage so that you don't have that the, the rust-oleum is going to be the softer of the two materials ultimately and what I say soft it means you can put your fingernail in it they wear here's an example a car finish any car finish doesn't matter this is just a typical car finish this paint is hard now the urethane is hard but it's it's hard but the material under it is is relative to hey here comes the sun look at this may get a ride in today who knows but i think that was a good experiment and we just wanted to share the information on you know with our friends on youtube it's something that you definitely can do it's it's not rocket science but rob i think has really benefited from this and thanks to everybody that shares their information especially this kind of information Now another little tip that may be useful for people at uh, painting silver. Silver is like gold. It's a, a color that can be a little, a little tenacious to uh, to get just right. But when I painted the R1 wheels, I mixed the paint from with clear, added my own pigment, and there's several different kinds of pigment. There's paste. There's silver paste. There's tiny flake, thicker flake, big flake. But the, the point that I'm making is you have a, almost an infinite variety of colors. And in this case, you can put in one drop of blue. You can put one drop of gold in. There's every possible thing. Silver gives you a really wide range of, of options. Now, when I did some work for Randolph Products, when we did the model airplane paint butyrate dope, the finishes that are now Brodak dope, we made a color called B25 Silver that had some really, really nice pigment sparkles in it. And I used some of that in this paint. So, it's, I can't wait to take it out into the sun for a ride. But, uh, so far I really like the way this looks. And it changed the whole, I think it changed the whole look of the bike for the better. Now, when we did the wheels on Glenn's Ducati and on this bike, one of the things we did... Paint, paint the gold, of course. And then what I did in the first coat of clear, I added just a pinch of the, the gold flake. So that the gold flake is over the gold paint. And then the final two coats of clear are just clear. But those flakes sit up off the gold. And that's what, when this is out in the bright sun, it looks pretty dramatic. But you can do that pretty much to any color. And it's funny, I just feel like I really should tell this story. There was... There was a time when uh, the, the late Larry Dettori was trying to match some paint on his Ducati to red. And 
He wound up ultimately with a color that he bought at Home Depot, a spray can that matched pretty close. And we had put some urethane on it. I think it was a rear seat, that the frame that holds the seat. But it looked perfect. And when I saw it in real life the first time, I said, holy mackerel, because he painted it over here. And I thought, oh, that's never going to match. It really matched pretty good. It matched better than the stuff he had made by the uh, Stevie Wonder Paint Mixing Company. I forgot. We, I almost forgot about that one piece. I wanted to put it out here so when Rob got here, it would be sitting out in the sparkling sun and he'd be impressed. He better be impressed. Rob, you better be impressed. And my favorite story of all, with the RD, I wanted to uh, recreate that the color of the uh, Yamaha racing yellow that from the time when I was uh, involved with that, the racing stuff, I used to love those paint jobs. But one of the things, I had a lot of Brodac dope and pigment in the house, and I painted this with Brodac dope and then put clear urethane on top of it just to make it that it would be protected from the gas. And all of these stripes, all of the things that go on this, it was a real labor-intensive thing to do this paint job. But it's if I tell somebody that's a modeler, this, this motorcycle's painted with what amounts to be model airplane paint, they're usually pretty blown away. And this was another funny story. Now, everybody knows I love Wes Cooley. I got his picture in my, uh, and I always wanted, I, I always wanted to have a real Wes Cooley uh, GS. But what happened was, you know, when it came out, they weren't available in the United States. And then when they did come out, they were kind of, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't think they were really as cool as they looked in the magazine. But what I wanted to do, I wanted to replicate this color blue. And I had pictures of the original bikes, the original ones. I forgot the pictures have faded. So I was going crazy looking for this color, trying to get it close. And one night I was at cruise night, and there's a Mustang, this exact color. So what I did, I had John Pothier make the decals, and John made these decals, and they are really a beautiful job. The, to match this color, which is a Mustang color. And to get this color right, because he's in California, he went to a Ford dealer with the decals to make sure they matched. So I just thought that was another. And we make we try to make all or almost all of our own decals for these restorations. And that's just one other thing that's that's unique and interesting. And every one of these bikes has a story. And one of the things, and I, I was going to try to do it this winter, but it just didn't work out because we've been watching our grandson so much. I thought this bike would be a perfect candidate for a set of gold wheels. And since I really like this bike... Uh, I thought that would be really, really cool. Maybe the gold wheels and a, that spring, the, the shock spring gold, something to set it off. Eh, I'm, I'm dreaming all the time. But anyway, every bike's a unique bike, a unique story. There's twists and turns in the road. There's dead batteries. There's flat tires. There's, uh, huh, and that's the world. The world of motorcycling. Anyway, I wanted to post this up so Rob could see his stuff. But you know what? It's not going to get posted because it's just running too late today and I have other things to do. So he'll actually be here to pick it up probably, probably momentarily. It does look nice. Yeah, it, really it does. Nice. I'm telling you. I, then I'm surprised. Luciano said his is holding up great. Is it good? So, so far, so good. Good. You know, and, and the good news is if you ever dump it, you can do this over for, yeah. for almost no it's no expensive. effort at all. Definitely. What color is the rest of the bike? Black. Black. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. This so that's one. easy. That's easy peasy. That was the stock color, you know, black and yep. silver. I love black. I, I always have a gun in the shop with black paint already in it. You never even have to put the black paint in. So really? You got, yeah. I, uh, I, I'm going to do the tank and the fender. Probably not this year because I do want to get it. This is another project. Now let's let's. This is a saddlebag to your. This is off my Pikes Peak Multistrada. It's a Multistrada saddlebag. Now the ST2 has saddlebags on it also. Different bags. Right. So I parked it in the spot where the ST2 okay. was, and I'm pulling out of the spot. And it's and wide at that point. It's like a this car. This is so wide. Yes. That yes. I literally and and believe me, I was cursing myself for days. I rubbed the wall. 
Okay. The garage door wall. Can we... I was exiting, and I could not believe that I did it, but it happened because... It's pretty well chewed up, too. It's pretty good. Well, once I hit, I stopped, and then I leaned yeah. it the other way. Of course. Caught yeah. it up and down, and then caught it side to side right. because I'm trying to get away from it. First thing, can we get that piece off? Make it a lot easier. We can get that off. Well, how does it come off? With two pins? I'm what holds sure. it on? I mean, I'm pretty If sure. you can take it off, I'll show you why once you get it off. It's easier to work on. It's locked. It oh, you don't have the key. Off. It ain't coming off. Okay. I didn't bring the key. <laughs> Always be prepared. What are you, a boy scout? <laughs> yeah. A boy I scout in the Russian army. Take yeah. two. That, okay. In a couple of minutes, okay. I'll have this <laughs> off for you. No problem. No problem. Well, I guess if you push the pins out. Well, don't even bother. All right, let's get a little sanding block. Okay. And let's see if you can get some of it out. Just make it look better anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make yourself a busy illick. Oh, he's got my click, click glasses. Now, this is funny. Miles has these click, click glasses. He sees, and they come apart. Show me how they come apart. So easy. Look. Yeah, they come apart. Little magnets. He sees they come apart. He wanted to play with them. So he's playing with them. Then he goes upstairs, sees Karen's glasses on the table. <laughs> and he says, Mommy, look. Uh, and they don't come apart. Uh, and then I'm out $400, you know. <laughs> okay. So what are you doing? 400 sandpaper. 400 grit I'm going to try, and I can feel it. So I just want to yeah. try. You're going to have to go deeper than the deepest ridge. Okay. Then what I'm hoping we could do is take the whole thing so it would match with like 2,000 grit or something. Gotcha. You, you got to get the, so there's no rivers. Gotcha. You, and you're going to have to take, this is going to take a few minutes to yep. do this. So I don't know if we're going to warranty this job or not, or... Uh, but the good news is it's not going to look any worse, that's for sure. That's for sure. Wasn't pretty. I personally guarantee that. <laughs> now, we used a lot of different grits of sandpaper to try to replicate the finish and an engraving tool, none of which were perfect. So what we're going to do is maybe do the plan, plan B on this is going to be to take this piece off and just sand the whole thing like that and then put flat clear on right. it. I'm thinking that there were might big be gouges it. in there. Right now, we're just trying to get the finish. I mean, you're under the, the most. Yeah, oh, you're under the most intense light. Intense fluorescent light, shows everything. So, Anybody doesn't know about paint, fluorescent shows every mistake. You would never see that out in the sun. Well, one, one thing, no matter how, the final thing that you do, no matter what, the, it looks a thousand times better than it did with those big. Uh, Listen, if it was all one uniform color, it's done. That would be it right there. All the gouges are out of it. That's the most important part. You know, it's a shame. I got a sandblaster, too. And with low pressure, you probably could replicate something real similar yeah. to that. But you'd want to do the whole part. You have to. To get it to match. Part. Yeah, you you, you're not going to end it. Where it ends, you're going to notice have to. it. You'd have to. Right, well, we fought the good fight on this one. But, okay. but I think the real answer is take some sandpaper home yeah. with you. Oh, you got 400. I have sandpaper. Take this piece off. Sand the whole Look, piece, come if back. If it's wet, again. yeah, yeah, you're not going to see it. Of course, the whole thing is. Or, wet. or you can do if you really want to be lazy, just get armor all and do the whole thing with armor all, and do the other bag with armor all too. Yeah. I won't do that. I'm going to do something that finalizes it. But I think the flat clear will make it perfect. I think you're right. And if it doesn't, you didn't, you know, worse off. Just take it off. Last little tip of the day. Everybody knows from time to time, after many years, the uh, the snap on the end of this wears out, so you got to grind it out. And Lowe's has these great replacements that have a wood screw, so you just put that wood screw right in your cheek, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna Glenn and I are gonna try to make this work out. We're gonna hammer it. But in. they give you a little tool. They give you this little thing to uh, to tap them down with. Yeah, right so. Here. But I'm, I'm sure we're not going to be able to use this. And they give you another one. Do that. I read the directions. You got to do that with that. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, ba, bam. We're going to have new with snaps. This, and the next thing you know, Bob's your uncle. Boom, ba, boom, ba, bump. Okay. Let's rock and roll. And let's, yeah, now, of course, we'll see if we put it on backwards. we got to do it over. <laughs> okay. So they all made us a nice, decent sized hole. Step one. Looks like you take the tool. Right. Okay. Always read the directions. <laughs> well, I've never All done this before, so well, looks like you you do this, this, this. Put that in there, and, and then, then you, tap you take it. that tool and put it in here. 
Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now you get a hammer and beat on it. Okay. And you make like a this. All right. All right, so a couple of taps. When you hear it, you get solid. You can feel it. You it can gets feel solid, it. yeah. And all you're doing is just bending. Yeah. And by the way, the when you're around the mushroom, when you're riding around and this thing is flapping like this, it's annoying. It's hitting the hell. neck, it hurts. Yeah, it's annoying. At, at 90 miles an <laughs> hour. 90. It's it's 90. I don't speed. No, I'm saying if you're on the track. <laughs> Unless I see another Ferrari on the road. <laughs> All right. Teach him a lesson. <laughs> All right, so now we just have to do this side. Yes, okay. That, you got to get that one inside there. That may be Well, so this guy. Yeah, maybe more difficult than you think. Goes this way. Oh, I hope you didn't put it backwards. I did not. I'll have to put the helmet on upside down then. <laughs> it's backwards. It's backwards. <laughs> Take it off. <laughs> I'll edit that video I'm out. I just tell you if you if We you wanna, do not edit video out. If you're going to practice this and you're going to do it right. Do it on Wendy's helmet, you right? Do it right. Uh, do oh it my gosh. Okay, do it once. Do it right. That, you know what? It's funny. They give you 15 snaps. They knew I was doing it. <laughs> That's funny. We okay. will leave that on the video. That's why my videos are known worldwide as the real deal. The real deal. The real schmazool deal. Well, you got me doing it. <laughs> Well, I never screw up. I bring you in when I need a body double to do the screw up part. <laughs> okay, let's try. Take one. Okay, edit that out, Steven Spielberg. Oh Pretty my sure this god! Is the way that I just did it, but I'm going to do it this way again. This way. <laughs> this is the. We're going to run out of staples, yo. We, we only got it. We only, we only have eight left. We haven't even done oh it. Oh my god! Kids, let this okay. be a lesson to you. Right. Just leave your helmet off. Don't you love when some football play, you see a helmet rolling on a field and the guy's head is still in it? It's this way. Okay. Well, All right. You want to so. do a prototype test? <laughs> no, he doesn't. I know it. I know it. So the easy way to oh. do this is get the... You other. know, I miss those days when you used to be here when you weren't working. You were here every day. I miss it, too. Oh, my God. I miss it, too. We had, okay. we had some great times. A lot of fun. Before Glenn got old and <laughs> had to go back to <laughs> work. To go back to work. <laughs> His welfare checks ran out. They ran out. They caught us. What are you going to do? He was on what's known as Ducati Disability. <laughs> Ride every day on a taxpayer's nickel. Oh, I missed that. I love it. Right, Man, on. I tried to get on that thing. Yamaha so Disability. This way and then that way. Okay, so it's got to go on that side. If this doesn't work out, you'll be, you'll be known worldwide as the guy who can't snap a snap. The gang that couldn't shoot straight. Guy that, the gang that can't put a snap on straight. Wow. Hey, just so you know, we went over a thousand subscribers uh, last week. They know who you are. They know where you live. They know what color you. your garage After is inside. After they see this video, you're going <laughs> to be down, down to 300. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and maybe none. <laughs> now, what originally starts out, these are made to go in wood. We had to drill out that bolt part, and we wrecked a few of them doing it, of course. But we eventually, I, what I did, I wound up in my supply of little screws i found exactly the little screw put a little ca on it so it's just as strong as it would ever be and boy that now when that snaps up now originally this came with a plastic oh that's perfect perfect baby that couldn't be any better that that's good and this little kit by the way if you have to restore one of these it's, it's this was from Lowe's, and I'm sure they make other sizes, but all you could do, look for it on the internet. But that pretty much does it, and I got a couple of spares here, so I'm good to go. So on our shop day, we got Rob's stuff done, delivered, Glenn's seat done, my helmet fixed, Glenn rewired the television today, we moved some furniture, and I hope tomorrow, I got the bike prepped up. I hope tomorrow is going to be a riding day. But, hey, we never know. You never, never know. And it's, this was a day, it just was as nice as it possibly could be here. And it's always fun hanging out with Glenn. Always fun hanging out with, in the shop, working on projects. And then, of course, sharing it with all our friends. So, hope you enjoyed the video. And thanks for watching. And we do, I apologize to all the Ducati owners. We always give them a hard time, but we really love Ducatis.